Welcome to the FlowerSchool.com video library. I'm Leanne Kessler, director of the Floral Design Institute, here to share with you our latest segment on the Gerbera daisy. They're such happy flowers. They're one of my absolute favorites. And when they're fabulous, they're really fabulous. The colors are so good. They're long-lasting. But you may have had experiences where they weren't quite so fabulous because they're really prone to water deprivation. And once it starts, they sometimes don't recover. They sometimes are just really unhappy babies, not happy at all. But let's look at how. You can have them be fabulous like this, because with a few little tricks and techniques for care and handling, you won't be suffering from the horrible droopy Gerbera. There are many different varieties of Gerbera daisy, but the main thing is that there are standards or full-size Gerberas, and then there are minis or smaller Gerberas. It's got a little bad petal, pull that off. So there's two sizes, and depending on what you're trying to create, you may want the full size or you may want the smaller one. And all the different colors come in both full size and small. It's like I've got a miniature here in yellow, and here's a full size in yellow. Two different varieties. This one's got a different center. This one's got a brown center. This one has a yellow center. Lots of different choices. Maybe you want peach. Is that not gorgeous? I can't believe how many wonderful colors exist. Maybe the soft baby pink. Again, full size and smaller. Now one thing you'll find is that occasionally they come in in not the best condition. Maybe you get them and some of their petals are falling off, but that's okay. Sometimes you want to be a little more dramatic and go ahead and pluck them off and do a very dramatic geometric design. Or other times they may look so sad, completely sad, to where you remove all the petals. This one originally looked like this, but he wasn't happy. So I just removed all the petals that were bad, and then there wasn't much left, so I removed everything, and it's still a beautiful flower to work with. When you get your Gerbera daisies, they can come to you in a number of ways. Some places put them in a little plastic cup, others do a little netting to protect their head, you want to remove that, gently pulling it off the flower so that it can breathe. You don't want to leave that on. It'll allow it to relax. But it does protect the petals during shipping, so that's a wonderful thing. Other growers will send them to you with a little straw on their stem. The straw is to help keep them straight and upright. I don't find them to be attractive, so I remove those as well. Others. Put them in a box where the head is supported by putting it through a hole in cardboard. And when you get them in, they're oftentimes bent like this because it's laid in a box, like so. And your trick is to make sure that they get all straightened out because you don't want one like that. You want it to look like this, upright and happy and perky, not a headlight just staring at you. To solve that, start with a bucket of warm water. They like a hot bath when they come in. Not hot, hot, but like baby bath water warm, and then a cutting tub. They do well if you do a cutting under water to remove any previous air pockets. Yes, they like flower food, so I put flower food in the holding bucket. And they're very much benefited by a pretreatment. Something like Quick Dip, which is a rapid hydrator. It's highly acidic. You just pour a small amount in a cup. So just a little bit doesn't take very much. Then taking each blossom, move them so you can see here, cut under water, removing two inches, then dip it in the quick dip, and transfer it over to a holding bucket. And this is where the magic begins. In the holding bucket, I have a rack a grid. This supports the head of the flower and lets the stem dangle freely down into the water. 
You don't want it to sit like this. The rack won't do any good. You want it to be suspended above the water. And that way, this Gerber daisy, the stem, as it hydrates, will lengthen and straighten and give you that turgid, perfect straight stem. If you do that with all of your flowers, now this one's taller than the bucket, so I need to shorten that down, or get a taller bucket, one or the other, but I'm just going to shorten it, because I don't need it to be quite that long. Dip it, so it gets that rapid hydrating treatment, and then let it set right onto the grid, and it'll relax back and be upright a bit later. And I do that with every single flower. And it may seem tedious and time consuming, but when you look at a Gerber that's firm like this, you can see why you would want to do that. Now, if you don't have a Gerber rack, you can use a cookie drying sheet, just a little metal rack from your kitchen. Or if you have metro shelving, that wire shelving, like we do in the classroom, we set buckets under the shelf and then dangle through the shelf. That works too. The trick is just to make sure that that stem suspends freely and dangles. Doesn't touch the bottom because if it touches, it'll bend and get that curvature hardened into there. So you always want to just cut, dip, and then place into the bucket. If I have a Gerber that's not real happy, I can reclaim it. Oftentimes, I'll set it in its own vase, and you can notice it's a lot shorter because they'll drink faster, rehydrate quicker. They don't have to drink up quite so far on the stem. So I'm going to make my own little Gerber grid by just taping across the top of the vase. And this will support the head. Then, as I go to cut, I cut it down very low. can't even get it in my bucket, so I'm going to cut some off and then cut it down lower. And I actually dip the head, let it get some water on it. And I check to see if that's going to dangle freely, and it will. Dip it. It needs the quick dip. And then let it dangle. And we'll watch and see how quickly it comes back. Now this one's really, really bad, and in fact, this whole area is kind of rotten, so I need to cut above that. It's not going to do me any good to try to revive something with a rotten stem. So I'm cutting much higher, way up at the top, dipping it, and then setting it down. And it just reaches the water. I'll need to add a little bit of water to that to make sure as it drinks that it still has water. This one, not so bad. It's just a little bit soft. So for him, I'm just going to cut him, dip, and then add him to the regular bucket because he'll come back just fine. This one, little bit iffy. This neck right here has been damaged, but I'm going to try to save him. And I'm, but I don't want to mix him in for fear. I want him to keep track of him in case he doesn't recover. A little too long, cut it a little bit shorter, then dip, and then set it in. And then set him aside for about an hour. And it's amazing how often they really do come back. Now, just like the cooking shows where they put it in the oven and then quickly pull it back out and it's cooked for an hour, we stopped. I went out to breakfast, and pancakes, bacon and eggs, the whole thing. I loved it. And it's been an hour and a half. I waited a little bit longer. Boy, was I hungry. But now we're back and it's time for the grand unveiling. Makes me nervous because doing this on camera, you just kind of wonder. I told you it would work, but now will it? We'll start with the one that was just a little bit damaged, the peachy colored one. And look at that. He's nice and firm now, very turgid, standing upright. And he didn't have a lot of damage, though. He was just partially having problems. I'm going to put him back in, let him continue drinking, because he'll rehydrate even more. Then we had the one that was absolutely awful, that I cut really short, barely fit in the water. He may not make it, but let's take a look and see. No, he's still very, very broken. I think that one, not going to be able to do much more than maybe just float in a bowl. Let it float like that in a flat bowl of water, because the face has perked up. The face is actually much prettier than when we put it in. The petals are upright, so he is drinking. But that stem, I don't think that's going to get turgid. Now let's look at the one that was kind of in the middle. 
And I'm hoping it's perfect now. Let's see. And yes, he's standing up nice and straight. He still has the damage of the broken petals and such, but he's drinking, his stem is nice. He'll be able to work with him. So two out of three, that's not bad. Isn't it interesting how quickly you can rehydrate them? Now the others, they are absolutely fabulous because when we started with them, they had no damage, but they're just drinking away. Happy, happy, happy. Gerberas cared for in this fashion are going to be very long lasting flowers. If you design with these in an arrangement with an excellent water reservoir, it can be foam or water, it doesn't matter as long as there's ample water reservoir. These flowers are going to last a full week, maybe more. I've had Gerberas, when I get them in perfect and take care of them in this way, I've had them last up to 12 days without any problem. It's an amazingly long-lasting flower. Now the ones that you revive, they're not going to last 12 days. But they're certainly going to give me another three to five days. And if I really needed that bloom, boy would I be happy that I was able to rescue it. And if I didn't, I may be happy just to have it on my desk so that I can enjoy it, as opposed to putting it in the garbage can. For more creative inspiration, check out our website at flowerschool.com. If you've got questions, comments, don't hesitate to contact us. You can reach us through the website or give us a call at 1-800-819-8089. If email is easier, feel free to use my personal email at leanne, L-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, at floraldesigninstitute.com. For now, happy Gerbera time. Have fun and do something you love.